Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 33 of May, June 2010. Of course, this is A level math, and let's see what questions we have for you today. Now, here we have question number one. So, here we have to solve the inequality. So, basically, find the unknown values, which is x for which these equations are satisfied. Now, there's many ways of solving this question. One, we can sketch graphs if you want to sketch, up to you. Uh, but one way is Whenever you have modulus or you have x on both sides, we, we, we square both sides. Let's see what happens. So again, when you square both sides, the modulus will go away. So you will have x minus 3 square more than 2 squares 4 and x plus 1 square. But now we have to factorize, oh sorry, expand the brackets. You will have x square minus 2 times this times this will be minus 6x and plus 9 at the end. This is 4, obviously. Here we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Fair enough. Now let's expand this, but this one will be the same for now. We have this plus 9 more than 4x squared plus 8x plus 4. Now let's turn everything to one side. Um, well, let's do that. So 1 minus 3 will be minus 4 will be minus 3. Minus 6 minus 8 should be minus 14. Uh, plus 9 minus 4 should be plus 5. Right. Now, let's change that minus sign. I don't, I don't like to work with minus. Right. So, I can send everything to the other side. You will have 3x squared plus 14x minus 5. Now, the sign will change to, to this one. So again, there's no equal sign. We don't need that over here. Now we have to find the critical values of this equation. As we have seen in add math, we just have to take the same thing we have right now and just equate that to, to, to zero, right? To find that critical values. There you go. That is 3x times x. 5 is 5 times 1. To get plus 14, we have to have plus 15 minus 1. Double check, so minus times plus is minus, so here we have minus, good to go. x will have to be value of 1 over 3, and x will be value of minus 5. So now we use our number line. So here we go, this is the line of 0 here, here we have minus 5 obviously, before 1 over 3. Now, if by observation you can see the graph here is, we have a positive value, it will have a minimum shape for the curve, right? We're trying to find the values below less than zero, so under this one, so it will be between those values. So there you go, x will have to be between minus 5 and 1 over 3. So one thing for, for A-level math, I will always uh, advise to uh, check, double check the values, if indeed we have this as correct, because sometimes one of the limits may not work. Uh, again. The best way to know is to draw graphs, but again, it's, it's kind of annoying to draw graphs. So we can test manually uh, if those values are correct, but in this case, it seems to be correct. But in, I would say in exam situations, always check your values, right? If it works or not. Take one value from here, one value from this side, for example, take one value from, from minus six, for example, take value one value from here, takes one, for example, and take one value zero here, for example, and see if everything works fine. So if you take one value outside, it should not work. Outside should not work, but here it should work. That's the idea, if this range is indeed correct. But in the end, this one seems to be fine. So x have to be between values of minus 5 and 1 over 3. That is your question number 1. Now let's move on to question number 2. So here we have variables x and y. Uh, they are connected by this equation. Now a is given to you as the constant. Great. Now, we know ln of y, if you were to plot ln of y against x, you will have a straight line. Okay. Now, using the equation, how would you uh, get something ln of y against x? So, by observation, I can apply ln on both sides. So, you will have ln of y cubed is equal to ln of a exponential 2x. Now, we can try to simplify this. Again, the goal is to get ln on one side, y, and x on the other side, right? So let's see what can we do with that. So first we can send the powers over here. You will have 3 ln of y. Fair enough. Here you have, we can break this down. That will be ln of a plus ln of exponential 2x. Now we can send this one over here as well. 
So, 3 ln of y will have to be 2x ln of e plus ln of a. Now, finally, we do also know something is that this is equal to 1 because y ln is log to the base of e. When these two matches, it will be 1. So, this will 1. And then to make this one become subject, we divide by 3 everywhere. You have 2 over 3x plus ln of a over 3 as well. This is my equation of ln of y against x. Now, obviously for part 1, we have to find the gradient of a line. So we know we get a straight line. So by definition, how does it look like? We know that straight line is y equal to mx plus c if you were to plot y against x. So by comparison, you can see, well, this is my gradient. This is my y-intercept. So here you go. My gradient have to be, by comparison, 2 over 3. This is my value for part 1. Now for part 2, given the line intersect the axis, the vertical axis of ln y at this point, again, the point is what? The point is 0 and 0 0.5. This is the x value, and this is the ln y value now. Fair enough, right? Find the value of a correct to two decimal place. So pretty easy. Use our equation that we have just derived. So here we have ln of y will be 0 0.5, 2 over 3 times 0, plus ln of a over the value of 3. So this will go away. Ln of a will be 1.5. Fair enough, right? Now a will have to be simply exponential of 1.5, which is what? That's fine now. That is 4.48 correct to two decimal place. Okay, and this is your answer for question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So here we have to solve the equation. Uh, solving means finding the values of x, of the unknown. Here we have x. Now, how would you uh, break this down? So let's see. By definition or by using the formula of tan double angle, here we have tan of 45 minus x. That will be what? That will be 10 of 45 minus 10 of x over the value of 1 minus plus actually 10 of 45 and 10 of x. So let's simplify this so we should know that 10 of 45 is just 1. So you will have 1 minus 10 of x over the value of 1 plus 10 of x. This is equal to 2 10 of x. Now, what can you do? Obviously, you can cross multiply to see what happens. So, this will go here, and this will go here. 1 minus 10 of x over here, and here you will have 2 times this will be 2 10 of x plus 2 10 square of x. Now, send everything to one side, you will have rearranged 2 10 square x have minus become plus so plus 3 10x and minus 1 is equal to 0 okay so now obviously we will uh, try to factorize this so if you can factorize obviously uh, if not we can use our formula for example again I, I hate working with big numbers like this so 10 let me uh, let y equal to 10 of x let's see what we have you will have 2y square plus 3y minus 1 is 0 so now uh, we can definitely uh, find the value of y using your formula. y is equal to minus b plus minus root of b squared 9 minus 4 times a times c. Right? That will be 17. Now divide by 2a, which is 4. So we'll have two values for y. y is equal to first value minus 3 plus root of 17 divided by 4, 0. 2808 uh, or y could be also minus 3 minus root of 17 divided by 4. That'll be minus 1.7808. Okay, good. Now let's obviously we don't care about y, we want to find the values of x. So one by one, here we have 10 of x finally is going to be 0 0.2808. This is a positive value. So look at our quadrants, ASTC has to be here and here. This is the angle directly, and this is 180 plus x. So again, if it is positive, we can find directly. So x will have to be 
tan inverse of the value directly. Okay, so tan inverse of here we have used degrees 0 0.2808, that will be 15.7, or have to add 180, that will be 195.7 degrees. That's good. Now for the next one, uh, over here, we have what? We have tan of x is equal to minus 1.7808. So here it is clear that it is negative value. Obviously, we have to use our quadrants again. For negative, we cannot do directly. So always recall that, right? We have to use our little trick, ASTC. So it will be here, S, and here. This will be 180 minus theta. Here we have 360 minus theta. So we first have to find theta, which is not x, right? Again, you can call this anything you want to. I'm choosing theta. You can call this B, A, whatever you want to call it. Now, theta is equal to what? Good question. Theta will be simply tan inverse of the positive value of this one. Same thing, but just positive sign. Again, this is not the answer. This is something that will help us find the answer for your question. That will be 60.7. So finally, um, to find x, we we'll use the quadrants. It will be 180 minus 60.7. That should be 119.3. Or we have 360 minus 60.7, 299.3. This is the values of x, which we are looking for. Okay. Now finally, go back. We need values of x to be between this and this. So we simplify. Well, this is not okay. And this is not okay. So finally, we have two values only. X will be 15.7 and 119.3. Okay, and this is your question number three. So let's move on to question number four. So here we have X equal to one, when T equal to zero. So by using these values, let's solve this equation we have for you right here. Now, first thing first, what is our intuition? Is that, well, we have to simplify this. You have what? 1 over x minus x over 4. Now, obviously, we have to combine them. But first, we have to multiply them by each other. You have 4x. Then we can just cross multiply. You have 4 minus x squared. So this became this. Right. Now, let's replace back into our main equation. We have dx by dt has to be 4 minus x squared over 4x. Now we have to bring all the x to one side and all the other stuff to the other side. So here we have dt. I will send it here over here. And you have to send all the x by cross multiplication. This will go down and this will go up. So you will have 4x over x for 4 minus x squared dx is equal to 1 remaining dt. Now to solve this equation, we have to apply integration on both sides. This is pretty easy t plus c. Right. How about this one? Let's observe how can we solve this. So by observation, you can see, well, we have one in the other. So what does that mean? If you want to differentiate this one, you will have minus 2x, which will cancel with the x on top. So thus, we will use the method of substitution. So u is equal to, let u equal to 4 minus x squared. So du by dx, that will be 0. Here we have minus 2x. So finally, the x has to be du over minus 2x. So let's replace back. Here we have integration, uh, 4x on top. That will be u. dx is du over minus 2x. Now simplify. This will go away. This will go away. This will be minus 2 over here. So which is minus 2 outside integration of 1 over u du. This will give you what? This will be minus 2 ln of u, which is same as we know u is equal to 4 minus x squared. Now put this back in your main equation. So this became this. You will have minus 2 ln of 4 minus x squared is t plus c. Now using the values given to you, let's find the value of c, right? So x was given to you by 1. t is 0. Replace. Minus 2 ln of 4 minus 1 is, is 3, 0 plus c. So c will have to be minus 2 ln of this one. 
So let's simplify. So, well, now what do we have? Put this back in our main equation, we will have minus 2 ln of this one t minus 2 ln of 3. Okay, we can send all the lawns to one side. You have minus 2 ln of this one plus 2 ln of 3 equal to t. So finally, you can factorize. So take a minus 2 outside, you will have ln of 4 minus x squared minus ln of, of 3. Right? Now we have to uh, simplify, obviously. So this is ln and ln. We can combine them together. You will have ln of 4 minus x squared minus become divided by 3. And that will be minus t over 2. Because we are dividing by, by this value, it will become this. Now to simplify this, what is ln? Ln is log to the base of v. To find the value inside, we send the base to the other side. So we have to know this, right? So you will have 4 minus x squared over 3 has to be exponential minus t over 2. So 4 minus x squared have to be what? Send this over here, 3 exponential minus t over 2. So finally, to find the value of x squared, we send this one over here and this over here. So x squared have to be 4 minus 3 exponential minus t over 2. Okay, and this is your question number 4. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Or otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.